The Eastern Cape is a province lying on the southeast coast of South Africa. It's a region of climatic diversity with indigenous forests and dense natural bush set between the rugged mountains of the southern Drakensberg and the stormy ocean known as the Wild Coast. The Eastern Cape is home to a few large commercial centres like the port cities of Port Elizabeth and East London, but the majority of its population is sparsely distributed across a rural landscape of quaint villages. Education is a dominant factor in the Eastern Cape's socio-economic future. In recognition of this, more than 65% of schools earmarked for construction, renovation or replacement in the country are in the Eastern Cape. This is good news for local construction businesses and material suppliers, but the initiative has faltered in the past due to poor rollout by government. It's expected that new programs like the ASCEDI, or Accelerated Schools Infrastructure Delivery Initiative program, will stimulate these crucial education projects. ASCEDI targets over 3,000 schools across South Africa for reconstruction or service improvements, and the lion's share of these schools are in the Eastern Cape. Although rollout and deliveries are taking place, government is still far behind schedule in delivering the thousands of schools required to address the needs of the rural population. We had to make sure that we struggled to, 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 to teach as there, as there were classes uh, in, one, in one hall, unpartitioned, therefore it was a, a, a kind of survival of the fittest. One teacher who is teaching in this corner, the other one is teaching in the other corner, and there was a lot of, of, of a problem then, to get my point. Up until then, that, uh, the, the, there came the Department of, 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 a, of Basic Education nationally to actually check as to what is happening here, and they were shocked to, to, to find those kind of uh, uh, experiences that we, that, that we had. The delayed rollout of schools has the communities up in arms. Local governments and the Department of Education are under immense pressure to deliver results, even if this means compromising on build quality or providing only temporary structures. Gordon Madolo, local chief for Rosedale just outside in Tata, speaks of his community's experience. Yes, initially, uh, these ABT schools, they are actually uh, looking like beautiful in the beginning, but they've got a very short-term life and they start falling apart and posing a threat to the kids and uh, to the community because the community needs the school as well. Gordon refers to ABT or Alternative Building Technologies, also known as IBT or Innovative Building Technologies such as light steel frame structures or prefab buildings. Government seems to have shifted its focus from traditional brick and mortar building to IBT systems because buildings are faster to erect. Most of the systems are trucked in, assembled and erected over a matter of days. In comparison, traditional brick and mortar buildings are far more labour intensive. Saving time will certainly help government with rollout, but local communities have serious concerns about quality, longevity, sustainability and job creation. Hulekam Flonto, Deputy Principal of Mtata Community School comments. Yes, this one, we got them from last year, in March or April from last year because of the role presently we've got 1413 learners so our kids were stuck in overcrowded classrooms so we went to the department now and again seeking additional classrooms but uh, we got the prefabs instead of permanent structures you know at least it has alleviated the problem of overcrowding but when it is cold it's cold. When it is hot, it's very hot. But at least that overcrowding problem has been addressed. In further contrast, Sipumelele Lunika, principal of Polar Park Junior Secondary School, speaks fondly of their clay brick facilities. Yeah, it's going very well because this one is uh, permanent. As you can say that uh, those ones were temporal structures. These are permanent structures. And uh, what I think the clay brick kind of structure is, is, is of advantage is that uh, you, you don't need to put paint after every three or five years. So it's a quite a, a very reliable kind of, uh, of, uh, of a structure, the clay brick structure. It's so reliable and a uh, uh, very good one. Yeah, it makes one feel proud and, and, and very much uh, attached to it because it is beautiful to start with. It's a reliable kind of material than to have a, a brick maybe made out of mud and any other material. Uh, a face brick is, is, it creates that pride to, to any person. The sole objective of a school is to provide a safe, 
comfortable and secure learning environment. Teachers and principals alike question whether IBT systems can meet these critical requirements. Gulandora PJS, built only in 2012 from an IBT system, formed on this mobile phone during high winds, is seen visibly rocking from side to side. Several of these systems have exhibited instability in high winds and the shaking, shifting and cracking and ongoing maintenance costs are a major safety concern for educators. Just two years into its life, there is evidence of cracking walls, ceiling boards coming loose from the brand ring and the obvious disrepair. For a benchmark, we visited Mtata High School, a school built of clay brick that has stood for over a hundred years. We interviewed their deputy principal, Sarita Hamilton, who has experience of teaching in several types of buildings. These buildings have been standing for more than 100 years. That is the old buildings like the ones over there, they've been here for more than 100 years. Um, since 93, where we've moved, uh, the Afrikaans school quietly but surely moved um, out. They, there wasn't a need for that anymore. Um, now we are basically about 800 pupils from grade R to grade 7. Numerous examples exist of schools erected using IBT systems that are not able to make the grade as productive learning environments. Extremely hot in summer, very cold in winter, noisy, unstable and temporary. These criticisms are disturbingly commonplace. Safety of students is a grave concern when IBT systems are used in place of traditional brick and mortar building. We have more than one account of bullets penetrating walls of schools. Not all IBT stories are sad stories though. Mandela Park Primary School is one of the good stories of IBT technology meeting the requirements of a safe and sound learning environment. However, there remains the expensive issue of maintenance, particularly painting when compared with the zero maintenance characteristics of a facebook structure. When speaking to a groundskeeper off record, he mentioned having to repaint his school every four to six months to patch cracks created by the unstable structures succumbing to high winds and temperatures. The use of clay brick and mortar is associated with a strong sense of pride and dignity in rural communities. It's a symbol of status and esteem. Village houses can be seen with meticulously decorated facades of clay brick, even where assorted colours and batches have been used over the years. The brick house is said to be the house of man. We visited one of the finest schools to come out of the CD programme and looked at a prime example of what government should be delivering to the communities of the Eastern Cape. We spoke to the principal and beneficiary of the new Nonteba Senior Primary School, Bulelwa Siguba. The community is very proud of this school. In so much, they wish that it's becoming, to it's, they wish the school to become a high school. They just, not, not, they just don't want it to be the senior primary. They want a high school here. If they can, that can, that can be possible. The new school, in comparison to what is presently being utilised, is unprecedented. Prior, we used to be running away from the watering roofs. The rain came inside through the roof, but now there's no, seemingly there's no harm. The, the, the learners who learned prior, their, their health was not safe because the rain fell whilst they were inside the classrooms. And they, you, you could see some people going outside through the walls. We are very proud now of this building. When asked about maintenance... The buildings are going to last us for a long time. So why is government cutting corners? Do these systems offer other benefits beyond their quick turnaround? Nelson Mavume, a local contractor, who has had experience in building both IBT and clay brick structures, shares his insights. The biggest problem that the country is faced with at present, it is not the technology, it's the money, the quick way of making money in the industry. One, at no stage that you can go and take something that you, you, you have got no proof of it from Italy and bring it to South Africa in a different environment without any research. That's one part. The second part, the South African government, I mean the South African society and people, they've got a serious problem of unemployment. 
The first thing these people, they came up with what we call, uh, I mean, the panels. These panels was also a quick fix. The second thing now, when they discovered these panels were rejected outright by, me, uh, by the communities because they are not sustainable. I mean, there is no normal person that can allow himself and be given a house that has got no guarantee of at least 30 years, at least. Stability, maintainability minimum. and safety as we have seen are a recurring fear with IBTs but added factors threaten the socio-economic survival of local communities. Skills development and job creation are at the heart of any developing economy. With rapid building times using minimal local labour, there's limited value in terms of job creation and no local skills transfer. Over the next five years, government plans to use innovative building technologies in 60% of schools, clinics and public infrastructure projects. This is not good news for local economies in the Eastern Cape. Consequences will be far-reaching for formal industries like brick manufacture, building retailers and contractors. The informal brick-making sector of the Eastern Cape contributes 120 million rand to the local economy, employs over 5,000 people as well as their 30,000 dependents. The formal brick-making sector, although employing less people, contributes over a billion rand to the Eastern Cape with over 400 million bricks produced annually. Either way, the future of traditional clay brick building is at stake something which brings to these rural communities the pride and dignity they deserve, as well as providing an energy efficient, sustainable and secure environment. An age-old method which facilitates skills development and job creation, a holistic approach to a developing economy which favours the masses and not only a few.